Welcome everybody to the ninth lecture of electrostatic fields. Today we're going to talk about a number of related topics. We're going to talk about Poisson's and Laplace's equation. We're going to talk about the uniqueness theorem uh, and talk about the method of image, which are different methods in solving uh, electrostatic field problems. So far, we had studied like three different methods in uh, solving for the electric field, which are like the summation or the integration of the electric field due to a differential element or the electric field because of a discrete uh, charge. When we have symmetry, we can use Gauss's law and we can use integration for the potential because of discrete charges or because of uh, like differential element and after getting the electric potential function we can apply the gradient to find the electric field so what we studied so far is very useful in solving a number of types of problems but it is not sufficient to solve all other problems so there is a need to solve problems with different um, sort of like conditions for example what is the electric field because of like a charged uh, blade is something that we know but what is the electric field because of a blade that is connected to a battery so it does have certain like dc voltage we don't know yet so there is some practical problems as we're going to see sometimes more complex than just finding the electric field because of charge distribution so far we are solving the electric field and electric potential function because of certain either discrete or continuous charge distribution but we don't know how to solve the problem if the given input is just the potential on some surfaces and we need to find the electric field because of this uh, given information and this is the topic uh, that we're going to discuss today in all cases the electrostatic postulates or the laws that governs uh, the laws that govern the solution of electrostatic field are those three equations the first one represents the conservative electric field uh, property or the conservation of electrical potential second one is the relationship between the electric potential and the electric field minus gradient and the third one is Gauss's law the divergence of the displacement uh, field equal volumetric charge density if the field exists in a linear and isotropic media, the relationship between the displacement field and the electric field is the dielectric constant. The permittivity of the dielectric material, uh, epsilon. So from Gauss's law in the differential form, the divergence of D equal rho so the divergence of epsilon e equal rho we know that e is minus gradient of v so the divergence of epsilon is constant because it's a linear system of gradient of v we take the negative sign outside equal minus rho volumetric we can divide by epsilon and we'll come up with this equation which is called Boisson's equation so Boisson's equation relates the electric potential to the volumetric charge distribution so in general in many different parts of the problems that we solve in general the charge distribution doesn't exist because mostly the charge will exist on the surface of uh, like conductors but in many different areas there is no volumetric charge density so the right hand side will equal zero and this special case of Poisson's equation is called Laplace's equation 
So now we are adding the fourth method to solve for the electric uh, potential function and the electric field, which is Poisson's equation and the special case of it, which is Laplace's equation. So now we have four different methods to solve for the electric field and uh, electric potential. So the Laplacian operator or this del square or the gradient of divergence does have the following expression in the three coordinate systems that we are dealing with in Cartesian and cylindrical and uh, spherical. You don't need to memorize this, but for sure you need to know how to apply this similar to the uh, exams problems many students because they don't practice they, they failed to did this operation correctly just like the like a set of differential operations but you need to exercise so that you can do it uh, correctly and quickly during the exam okay as i said like this del square or the divergence of the gradient is the a differential operator this differential operator can be applied to scalar properties or scalar quantities scalar functions like this case also it can be applied to uh, vectorial quantities and it of course it does have a different expression but in our course we'll deal with it uh, applied on the electric potential and we're going to use its uh, format or its function over scalar quantity similar to the three cases that we have and now let us like do some exercise on solving this problem so we have a problem that i think we saw it before so we have like two plates uh, of barrel plate capacitor separated by distance d filled with a dielectric material the potential at the bottom equals zero at the top equal v naught so the capacitor is connected to a battery and here it's just like telling us to neglect the fringing effect which is the uh, non-symmetry that does exist at the edges of uh, the capacitor at the edges and we need to find the electric field and electric potential at any points between the two plates also we need to find the surface charge density on the two plates so now before we go for the solution i want you to i want you to think about how to solve this problem okay of course because we are studying poisson's equation we're going to solve this using poisson's equation but this problem had been solved before uh, using Gauss's law because we have symmetry here we have symmetry with respect to x and z we would expect the variation only to happen in the y uh, direction we also solved this problem using uh, the potential we know that uh, the potential between the two blades and now we're going to solve this problem using Boisson's equation. So let us see how to use Boisson's equation to solve this problem. So in the media between the two uh, blades, we have no charges because this is a dielectric material that is not charged. And we have no variation in X nor in Z. The only variation is in Y. So if we go for the uh, Laplacian operator for Cartesian coordinate system, no variation with respect to Y, no variation with respect to Z, and we are left only with variation with respect to X. Uh, sorry, no variation with respect to X nor Z, only variation with respect to Y. So in our problem, the uh, partial, partial Y second order differential uh, operation with respect to y will be just second order differential operation because there is no variation for any other variable and we have this expression here 
So we just integrate the two sides. So the first derivative of v with respect to i equals constant. So v would equal constant multiplied by y plus another constant. And now we can apply the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions that we have at y equals 0, the potential equals 0. At y equals d, the potential equals v naught. So at y equals 0, v equals c2. So we know that v equals 0, so c2 will equal 0. The second boundary condition, v naught equals c1 d. So c1 equals v naught over d. So c1 would equal v naught over d. So v will equal v naught over d multiplied by y plus 0. So now we have the expression for the electric potential at any point between the two blades. Now we need to find the electric field. The electric field equal minus uh, gradient of the electric potential. Because we have no variation with respect to x, no variation with respect to z, the only variation remaining is variation with respect to y. And electric field will equal minus the gradient of v, which equal minus a y v naught over d. So it's constant and it is pointing down, which is in that direction from the positive to the negative. So this is the lines of uh, electric field. Now the second uh, question is to find the surface current, uh, sorry, the surface charge density at the conductor's blades. So the boundary conditions that we have that D normal equal rho surface or E normal equal rho surface divided by epsilon. And AN here, the normal component is going out of the surface. The normal component is going out of the surface. So at the lower plate, AN is going out of the surface. So it is in the AY direction. So you just need to bring this here so that you can see. So at the bottom, AN is going out of the surface. So it is in the AY direction. So En will equal minus V naught over D. So the surface charge density at the lower uh, blade equal minus epsilon naught V naught over D. Repeat the same for the upper plate, but An on the upper plate is in the direction of minus An out of the surface. So on the upper plate, the normal component of E equal V naught uh, D it is in the so the surface charge density on the upper plate equal epsilon v naught over d. Of course, we should expect that the upper and lower surface charge density be equal in magnitude and different in sign. So we solve this problem using Poisson's equation. Okay. Let us go for the second, uh, another example. So the example here is talking about find the electric field, find the electric field both inside and outside a spherical cloud of electrons with a uniform volume charge density, rho equal minus uh, rho naught, that exists between zero and B and outside at radiuses larger than B, the charge density equals zero. Solve this using Poisson's equation. So this is very, very similar to uh, the midterm exam problem, similar to the example that we covered before, solving this problem using uh, like a different method. So this problem, here I'm just asking you a question, like how can this problem be solved? using a different method rather than solving using Poisson's equation. We can solve this problem using Gauss's law. We can solve this problem uh, using the integral form 
of electric field or integral form of uh, electric potential. So the problem can be solved with any method of the four methods that we like studied so far. But of course, here we're going to solve the problem using Poisson's equation because it is required and also because we are exercising on Poisson's equation. Okay, so the idea is very similar. We write Poisson's equation here. This is uniformly distributed, like uniformly charged uh, cloud of spherical shape. So there is theta and phi symmetry. So the only dependence is on R and we can write del square or the divergence of the gradient of uh, electric potential i denotes like the inner region so in the inner region we have rho equal minus rho naught so the right hand side will be plus rho naught divided by epsilon naught it is telling me here or like it didn't mention any uh, media so we assume the media is uh, free space so we have the equation here what is required we need to find electric field both inside and outside so what is required is the electric field so we write Boisson's uh, equation for the inner part so we multiply both sides by r square integrate this would be like r cubed then we divide by r square so this will be rho naught epsilon naught r divided by three and we add a constant divides a constant by r square so dv by uh, dr does have this expression so the electric field equal minus gradient of uh, vi and if you check the expression for the gradient in spherical coordinate system you will find that ei should have equal this uh, value here so with like we don't need to go and find v then we do the divergence because the divergence just depend on this value and we know this value now okay so now the electric field does have this expression with a negative multiplied by negative ar so if we go here at r equals zero we'll find that this expression will equal infinity unless c1 equals zero in order not to have infinity at the center of the spherical cloud c1 must equal zero so this is a boundary condition we need like some like physically realizable quantity we we shouldn't find a solution that equal infinity so c1 equal zero and just applying the electric field will equal minus ar multiplied by uh, rho naught divided by three epsilon naught the negative sign here should be expected because this is negative charge so the electric field is going towards the center now in order to solve for the outside we're going to just repeat the process but outside there is no charge so the right hand side will be zero so solving with the same technique dv outside by dr equal a constant of uh, r square electric field equals the negative of the gradient which is minus ar dv over dr which is minus ar c square over r square how can we find c2 we need to find c2 from the boundary conditions the boundary conditions that we have the electric field at the interface between the two area e out and e in at r equal b must equal the same so we can just equate the side here c2 over b square with the value at b and we come up with the value for the constant so the field outside equal 
e naught multiplied like e naught equal minus a r multiplied by this quantity you can check on this by solving the problem using gauss's method and or by integration and make sure that you will get the same uh, result so now we're going to move to another method of solving some more complex problems and the method that we're going to uh, explain shortly is the method of image and it is based on the uniqueness theorem the uniqueness theorem is stating that a solution of Poisson's equation Laplace equation is a special case a solution of Poisson's equation that satisfies the given boundary condition is a unique solution it means that solving the problem in a certain area with a given boundary condition would be the same solution even if used many different methods to solve the problem if you keep the same charge distribution same boundary condition in the area of interest your solution is unique irrespective of the change outside the area you are solving in and we're going to see how we can use this uniqueness theorem in solving problems using the method of image okay so here for example how to solve a problem of a point charge over a very large conducting plate that is grounded so we have the charge and we know that there is some induced charges on this plate how can we find the electric field anywhere on the top half space we know that the solution in the lower half space will equal zero because it's shielded and there is no charge on the bottom and there is no electric field so we are concerned only with the solution here how can we solve this problem the only way is to find the charge distribution on the surface and find the electric field because of the charge surface charge distribution and the point charge which is something very difficult to do so what we're going to do to have uh, like a solution for this problem we're going to use the method of image so let us see how the method of image can be used here so the boundary condition so in the upper half space we have two things charge distribution is just a point charge here no charge distribution anywhere else except this point and we have zero potential at this plane at y equals zero plane we have zero potential so if we can like find a problem that is similar to this problem and we know how to solve it such as that we keep those two things same charge distribution on the upper half space zero potential at the interface we can find a solution so okay so this is our problem that we are looking for a solution and this is the solution using the method of image let us see the philosophy behind this so look for the upper half space in the original problem and in the equivalent problem same charge distribution at the same position okay the boundary condition in the original problem we have zero potential on this surface here so we'll have looking here this is positive charge we put an image here or like a charge here that we call it like image uh, charge same distance same magnitude was different polarity because of the symmetry we'll find that the potential here on the surface of this plane equals zero so now the upper half space in this equivalent problem and the upper half space of the original problem are identical we don't know how to solve the original problem but we know how to solve the equivalent problem just a problem of two point charges we can find electric field anywhere we can find the potential anywhere 
So the solution on the upper half space of this equivalent problem is the same as the solution in the upper uh, half space of this problem because same charge distribution, same boundary condition. The solution of the equivalent problem at the lower half space has no meaning to us because we know here in the lower half space we have zero electric field, zero potential, there is nothing. So we're going to solve this problem, but the useful information is the information in this region here. Okay, so solving this problem is straightforward. We just have two point charge, so the electric field equal the electric field because of charge one plus the electric field because of charge two or the electric uh, potential at any point. Let us take a point here, X, Y, and Z. And this point is uh, zero, D, and zero, zero minus D and zero. So the potential at any point, arbitrary point, equals the potential because of the positive charge plus the potential because of the negative charge. Negative charge potential is negative. The distance between this point and positive charge equal this expression. The potential bet uh, at this point because of the negative charge equals this expression. And the problem is solved. Or we can solve the problem like the electric field because of point charge one plus the electric field because of uh, electric potential uh, because of the negative charge. So the problem is solved. Again, I'm emphasizing the solution on the upper half space is identical to the solution that we are looking for. The solution in the lower half space has no usage because we know that the solution here is like zero potential everywhere, zero uh, electric uh, field everywhere. Now we have another problem. So we have sort of like a corner, a large corner uh, surface. So we have like a surface here, a surface here that makes like a 90 degree. And this uh, is extending in the direction perpendicular to the screen. And you want to find the force on the point charge because of this structure. This structure is grounded and you're going to use image theory or like method of image to solve the problem. So we know the solution here. We just need the solution in the first quarter. In the other three quarters, we know the solution. Zero potential, zero electric field. So we are only in need to solve in the first quarter so no charge distribution change in the first quarter, no boundary condition change in the first quarter. So what we're going to do is that we're going to remove the conductor and try to find some image charges that makes the potential on these two surfaces equal zero everywhere on the surface. So we have a positive charge about a negative image. So the potential here is zero. We have a positive charge but a negative image so the potential here is zero but because of this negative charge the image now the potential after adding the two charges two images the potential here is not zero also the potential here is not zero in or in order to make them zero again we put a third image uh, positive charge here so now at any point on this surface the potential is zero at any point on this surface the potential is zero so look for the first quarter same charge distribution as the original problem same boundary condition as the original problem the electric field at this point equals the electric field because of image one image two image three so three uh, forces we just add them victorially so one force with this negative charge, it's attraction, so it is in the negative y. One force attraction, which is negative x. Another 
a force that is uh, repelling which is in this direction because of the third image we just add the uh, three forces we found the value for uh, the point the force affecting the point charge so here the potential sorry the force equal the electric field because of charge one which is in this direction divided by the distance so this is d1 another d1 so it's 2d1 sorry 2d2 square the force here is 2d1 square in the direction of minus ax here we are using the distance here is 2d1 square plus 2d2 uh, square under the square uh, root and the unit vector is adding another uh, magnitude which is 3 over 2 and we just need to add the three vectors together to find the electric uh, force on the point charge because of this L-shaped ground uh, structure okay another problem that we need to solve so this is our like solved problem using the method of image that we need to like study so that we can like clear like it's sort of like a method of thinking so now we have a conducting cylinder and we have a linear charge distribution the linear charge distribution is extending infinitely and the cylinder is extending infinitely and we need to solve this problem there is no way to solve the problem unless we know the charge distribution on the surface so we don't know that so we will start to think about using the method of image we need to find the solution outside because we know that the solution on the cylinder inside the cylinder is known there is no electric field the only thing that we need to find out the potential everywhere the boundary condition that we have is that the potential on the surface of the cylinder to be equal because a conductor is an equal potential surface so we need to find the field outside the cylinder so no change should be done outside of the surface of the cylinder but we can like change things inside the cylinder because inside the cylinder is not the region that we are studying the solution of this original problem would be the solution from this equivalent problem the equivalent problem is two regions outside of the cylinder inside the cylinder inside the cylinder we don't care because this is not the region that we are solving for because in this region we know the electric field equals zero the potential equal constant outside of the equivalent problem is exactly the same of the original problem if we can cause the potential on the surface to be constant so what we need to do we need to do something we can put some charge distribution inside such that the potential on the surface of the cylinder equals zero so people suggested to put like an image uh, linear charge distribution parallel to this external one with negative polarity we know that from solving this problem before the electric field there's a potential because of uh, a linear charge distribution infinitely extending linear charge distribution the potential between two points does have this integration so it does have this expression we're going to choose r naught as any arbitrary point that does have a zero potential we can't make our r naught to be at infinity because the charges are extending to infinity so just we use this technique we just put an arbitrary point let us say a point here that does have like a, a 
zero potential and we take it our reference so the potential difference between this point and R naught does have this expression because of the positive charge distribution because of the negative charge distribution we have another expression where the center is at this point so now if we choose any a point arbitrary point on the surface of the cylinder and we find the potential at this point because of the positive charge it does have this expression because of the negative charge it does have this expression we just simplify the expression we'll have this expression the potential of the point m arbitrary point on the surface does have the shown expression here in order to have the potential to be constant irrespective of the position of m we need to have this ratio constant so let us see if this is possible or not so this can be done if this uh, triangular this triangle o m b i is similar to the triangle o p m so o m b i if it is similar to o p m we'll find out shortly that this ratio will be constant so we need to choose this distance di to make those two triangles similar similar triangles means they are scaled versions of one another so we need to choose the point bi such that ombi is similar to o uh, pm and this can be done if the angle ombi o m b i this angle equal to o b m this angle because this angle is common between the two uh, triangles so if two angles are equal the third of course must be equal and we have like similar uh, triangles let us see how to choose di so pay attention to the order so om om is sort of like the counterpart of ob so om over ob obi is the counterpart of om obi over om pim over pm so this is coming from the assumption that the two triangles can made similar to one another substituting the radius so we'll have like ri over r equal di over a equal a over d so from this two we can say that if we choose di to equal a square over d which is a constant and this is a constant if we choose di such that this side here would be a constant and we would guarantee with this setup that the electric potential at the surface of uh, the cylinder in the equivalent problem is constant and this is the potential of the surface of the cylinder in the original problem the solution outside of the cylinder in the equivalent problem is the same solution because of the uniqueness theorem same solution as the solution outside of uh, like the cylinder in the original problem and we had solved the problem this is the expression uh, so finding the electric field at any point is the electric field because of this 
line charge distribution and this line charge distribution the potential anywhere is the sum of the two potentials and we had the problem solved with the method of image a third problem so we solved some problem in cartesian some problem in uh, cylindrical and now we are solving method of image problem uh, using spherical coordinate system so here what we have we have a grounded sphere and a point charge outside of this grounded sphere and we need to solve the problem we need to find the electric field everywhere outside of the conducting grounded sphere so we'll do also a method of image we need to search for some quantity qi that we put inside such that we have uh, like a solution so what are the boundary condition the charge distribution outside of the sphere in the equivalent problem must be the same so we just have a point charge here point charge in the same place we can do any change we need inside the sphere and remove the sphere such as that the boundary condition would remain constant if we can do that using the equivalent theorem we can say that the solution outside of the sphere in the equivalent problem is the same as the solution of the outside of the sphere in the original problem okay so we need to put some charge qi a distance di from the origin such that the potential at any point on the uh, sphere to equal zero so in this case we just we need it to be constant and zero because this is grounded uh, sphere okay so the potential because of a point charge potential because of another point charge the total potential electric potential at any point on the surface equal potential because of the original charge plus potential because of the imaginary the image charge again the two uh, triangles need to be similar so that we can say that we need qr over r plus qi over ri to equal zero which makes it like qi over q equal minus ri over r so doing the same similarity uh, equation we can say that if we put the image charge at the position di equal a square over d and make the value of qi equal q multiplied by minus a over d under this condition the potential at any point on the surface of the sphere in the equivalent problem will equal zero same boundary condition as the original problem same charge distribution in the two problems so the solution outside of the sphere in the equivalent problem is the same as the solution outside of the sphere in the original problem solution inside the sphere and the equivalent problem is meaningless to us because we know the solution inside the sphere and the original problem which is zero potential zero electric field everywhere so with the method of image we had solved this problem as well there is many other problems that can be solved with a method of image like this one a sphere that is charged like in the close proximity of a grounded plane so the solution here is more complex this is for your information you are not requested or like you will not be examined in this i'm just telling you that there is more problems that can be solved using the method of image so here we had reached the end of this lecture where we talked about Poisson's and Laplace's equation and how to use them to solve a problem. 
We talked about the uniqueness theorem uh, in electromagnetics or in electrostatic solution. And we talked about the method of image. We applied the method of image in Cartesian, in cylindrical, and in spherical uh, cases. So thanks for watching the video and meet you in the discussion session. Goodbye, everybody.